how many times have you heard experts tell you, never compete competitions for losers. Go find a monopoly and dominate it or do this and do that. And then you'll hear people saying, I love competition. I want to beat you. I want to see you lose. All this other stuff. So who's right? Because this is a bipolar relationship, man. They're polar opposites. Who is right? So today in this video, I'm going to give you some ideas. And either one or two of them is going to click with you depending on what phase of your business you're at. Your startup, maybe mid-size, I don't know what you're doing, 100 million, 500 million, maybe 6 million, maybe you're doing 60,000 a year. But I want you to be thinking about competition and business in a completely different way. And by the time you're, I'm done with the video and I make my case to you about competition, I want to hear your thoughts. But throughout the process, if I say anything that prompts a question, comment on the bottom. By the way, if you have not subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel as well. So let's get right into it. Look, you have two enemies. Two enemies when it comes down to competition, right? And you have these, these two competitors are your main competitors you'll ever face. One of them is on the inside, the other one is on the outside. Let me explain what I mean by this. 90% of your time ought to be focused on you looking at ways you can improve you and your company, not what's going on in the marketplace. 90% is here. Maybe 10% of the time is here. Let me explain. When I first started my own business and we started off and we were expanding, I was in Northridge, California, right? And I had left and I started competing and I'm just getting a ton of pressure from competitors. But at that time when I had just left, they were still emailing me all their major private leadership conference calls that, were, that they were having that I could have gotten on. I had access to every single data that they had at that time. Ask me how many times I got on their conference call. This many times, zero. I never once got on the conference call, never once logged on to their website. Why is that? Because I knew my biggest enemy is this mind getting distracted and the more I'm spending time on the outside, I can't focus on how to improve because my move is always predicated on their next move. And if I'm always predicated on their next move, I'm not setting the stage. Let me explain to you what I mean by this. So think about it this way. If you're watching this and you know somebody who wants to be an English teacher, let's just say you go to college, you get a degree, say, I want to be an English teacher. Awesome. What is a better place where you're going to have fewer competitors for you to become an English teacher? California? Is it Chicago? Is it Texas? Is it Florida? Or is it Japan? What do you think? Is it Germany? Can you imagine you from uh, California, you get your degree and you go to Japan and say, I want to start teaching English here. Oh my gosh, absolutely come on down. An American is willing to leave everything behind to come and be a teacher in Japan. You have no competition. How many Americans ever you want to go to Japan and teach uh, uh, English? How many want to leave America and go to Germany? But that is the idea of competition. You're not fighting head on. You know, you'll hear cocky, I'm going to fight you head on and I'm going to kick your butt. Really? Even in fighting, the toughest guys in the world who fight, they don't fight head on. For instance, if I'm a boxer, if I'm a boxer and the opponent I'm fighting, it's an MMA fight, he's a jiu-jitsu expert. My goal is to do a stand-up fight because I can beat him because he's fighting my fight. His goal is to get me on the ground because he gets me on the ground, I'm done. I don't have a jiu-jitsu game. He doesn't have a boxing game, so every time he comes, I've got to push him off and get one in. Every time I punch, he's supposed to duck and get my legs and get me down and then do his stuff that he does, submissions that he does for me to tap out, right? But the goal is for him to play my game and his goal is for me to play his game. This is why your number one focus ought to be on the inside. This is your biggest competition you will ever face. The more you're focused on this, the bigger of a chance you'll have. So having said that, you may say, okay, Pat, so now what do I do? I mean, I, I want to I want to build a massive business. I want to be all over the place. Well, listen, five things you're going to be having to go through. Number one is locally. You compete locally. Then you compete statewide. Then you go regional, then national, then globally. Andrew here, his parents have a popcorn company. They make popcorn. What's the popcorn company called, Andrew? Austin Gourmet Popcorn. Now, are you guys from Dallas or are you guys from Austin? Austin. You're from Austin. So watch this. How many uh, uh, popcorn gourmet companies are there in DFW right here? 20 or 30. How many in Austin? Two or three. Two or three. And one of them is who? Uh, Austin Gourmet Popcorn. How's your business? How's your parents' business doing? Great. They, they, because there's business that's coming into them because they don't have a lot of competition. Right? So locally, you got to find a market locally that you can compete with in a way that you differentiate yourself from everybody else. A lot of times people already think about, I want to build a global business. You know, I want to build a national business. Yeah, but you're not even known locally. Let's focus here first. Then let's go over here. Yeah, yeah, but you don't understand. Look, but my product is a tangible product. 
Okay, then that's even more of a reason to start locally. Because if it's tangible, you want to go global or national, you got inventory, you got all this other stuff. Well, my product is intangible, I can go to another market. Yeah, but does it have regulations? What's the state laws? What do you need to do go to another place? What's the speed of expansion? So you yourself, I'm not giving you specific direction, I'm just telling you this is an area to be thinking about on how you're going to differentiate yourself here. Start off locally, then you go all the other stuff. Let the other guys focus on going here fast, and then they run out of money, or they're too thin. It's like going to war. How many uh, generals have you read about when they would go to war and they have 10,000 soldiers, and they would say, 1,000 go here, 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 right? And they stretch them, and then all of a sudden they lose seven of the fights. They got 7,000 people they lost. Stay tight, stay strong, go together, and then take this market, and then go together, and then take that market. Don't spread them too thin. Same thing goes with wanting to compete in a marketplace. Now, that's one part to be thinking about. Next part to be thinking about. What area do you want to be competing with that differentiates yourself that others are not competing with? For instance, price. Mine's going to be cheaper. Okay, great. So I'm going to beat them because i got a cheaper product. What if somebody comes and has a cheaper product than you? But I'm going to be even cheaper. What if somebody comes and says, what if I want them cheaper? You can't compete there because Metro PCS, we're going to have the cheapest one. Someone's always willing to go cheaper if that's what you're going to be fighting. We're going to have better service. That's actually a good one. If you can do that and the service is so good that I walk away remembering it, I'm telling this story to other people. Maybe it's going to be experience, right? Maybe it's going to be quality of your product is just above everybody else. Maybe it's the speed of delivery. Maybe it's your marketing. The way you tell stories is better. Like Coca-Cola is better at telling stories than maybe Pepsi is, right? You always feel good when you see Coca-Cola. Their marketing is impeccable. Now, some will say, well, Coca-Cola tastes a million times better or Pepsi tastes... They have a very good marketing. McDonald's has good marketing, right? Some people, it's regulation. What do I mean by regulation? Look, one thing most people, you know, sometimes they ask me, they say, Pat, why is, why is this bigger company that's worth this much and the guy's worth $6 billion, why is he giving money to the person that's saying in a presidential campaign that that person is going to overregulate their industry? Why would this guy give money to him? This makes no sense to me, Pat. It makes all the sense in the world. What, what do you mean? Because he's giving money to this guy with a way for regulation to come out that helps him so the barrier to enter is tougher, so you can't compete with them. So the bigger companies want more regulation so you can't catch up to them anymore. The bigger companies. The smaller guys that are coming up, they're like, dude, let's get rid of regulation so I can compete. The bigger companies are like, no, 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 no. We're not working that hard again, man, because we built this business. Overregulate these young guys so they can't catch up because we know how hard it is. Give them more regulation. That's their competition, right? So you got to figure out a way if it's going to get more regulated here, how am I planning myself to make sure this is, you're thinking about that as well. Here's another thing to be thinking about when it comes down to competitions, Blue Ocean Strategy. If you haven't read the book, you ought to read the book. It tells you four things. So look at your industry, whatever industry you're part of. How can you eliminate something that maybe other competitors are doing? Just get rid of it. Completely get rid of it. You know what? These guys are selling motorcycles and uh, cars. We're going to get rid of the cars. We're going to focus purely on motorcycles. Great. You're eliminating cars. Or everybody's focused on trucks or all this other stuff. We're going to get rid of trucks. We're going to focus on vans because we're going after family market, whatever it is. Eliminate. We're going to increase a certain part of the business. We're going to decrease market. We're going to decrease something, right, in part of the business. And then we're going to create something that others are not doing. And this becomes your story that others don't have. MySpace had music. Facebook doesn't have music. And they don't care whether you like it or not. They decrease and eliminate it, right? Create a fan page. MySpace didn't have fan page. All of these things, Yahoo to Google. Yahoo had Perisco you know, Horoscope and all this stuff. Google said, we don't care about Horoscope. We're going to give you a box. They eliminated everything. This will never work. They eliminated it. But they made it simple. Search was easy. They increased, you know, easier way for you to use it, and then boom, they grew. So you got to be thinking about this as well in your own industry, whatever phase of your business you're at. So again, I'm thinking out loud with you to give you some ideas that some's going to connect with you. Next, study what's working and what's not working. There are some things that's not working in the marketplace. Study it. What is working, what's not working. Project future issues and opportunities. I think a lot of times, People are so focused on what's going on right now that they forget what is going to be taking place in the next few years. What new regulations could possibly come out? What's going to happen some politically? What are some changes that's going to take place in your state, in your local area? Who's the mayor? Get involved. Build a relationship with some of these guys that are involved in those areas. Maybe you can say, you know, in the, in the future, I think 
What's going to happen? Technology, this product's going to go away. I really think that's going to be going away. Technology is really moving this way. Start making some future projections yourself. Start thinking about it. What do you think is going to happen here? What do you think is going to happen here? So you're thinking long term, knowing how you can pivot properly so to be prepared for some of those regulations and some of those opportunities. The simplest way for me is to beat your prior best. Competition for me has been very simple. It's to constantly focus on beating your prior best. You've heard me talk about this many times. If your number is $60,000 in a month, focus on beating 60K in a month. If your number is nine months in a row, you've beaten the prior best, do 10 months. If your number is for Thursday, your biggest sale is $6,000, for Thursday, beat $6,000 to $7,000. If you constantly focus on that part, you're eventually going to be increasing here. Next thing you know, you're competing with many of the people outside and they're focused on you because you've been focused on the inside game. Know where you want to compete and differentiate. Know where you're strong at and where you're weak at. This is the part why I said the head on. And then long-term thinking versus short-term thinking. So as you think about these things with competition, the more you can position yourself where everybody else is pivoting based on your moves, you're winning. The more you're positioning yourself where you're constantly pivoting on, for instance, I'll give you an example right now with basketball. Everybody in the NBA is changing their teams to learn how to face who? Golden State, right? Well, what if a team says, I'm going to do it a completely different way. I'm going to build around a massive center and defense, and I'm going to shake them up. I'm playing a different game. What if that happens? Then someone's, someone's making them pivot to them. If you keep trying to pivot to the Golden State, you're not going to be winning. So the idea about everything I'm telling you with competition is figure out a way to go into a market where you're not competing with everybody else. Figure out a way to go into a market where you're all by yourself and everybody is kind of looking at you as the expert and you're saying, look, you guys are big, but I'm not competing with you, I'm competing with this. And no one's in this space, I'm creating this space, so I'm doing this part here. I'm going after this market, you want to sell to these people, I'm not selling to them, I'm selling over here. You, you're looking for this age, I'm looking for this age. You're looking for this educational background, I'm looking for this, and no one's paying attention to them. The more you find that niche, that part that no one's going to, you end up creating your own opportunity that nobody else is competing with uh, as well in that marketplace. So that's what I would tell you to be thinking about with competition. Again, you got questions, thoughts, comment on the bottom. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on the subscribe button to see more videos on Valuetainment. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.